Let's make a simple Linux distribution which can play some audio files. For this I'm going to start by going to kernel.org and grabbing the stable release of the Linux kernel. So right click here on tarball and then copy link address. Now I'm going to use the wget command to fetch this tar archive and I'm going to extract the archive. So tar xf, extract file. Now I'm going to rename the folder to just Linux and let's delete the tar archive. Now in this video I'm using Alpine Linux and I do have some setup scripts that will set up the dependencies for building the kernel so you can take a look in the description for information about that but I'll just show you how it looks like. Basically you're going to want to run setup, setup dev env and setup kernel dev. All these scripts do is just install some packages from the package manager. Now in this video I'm going to build a distro for x86 32 bit because later on we're going to test this with real hardware and I'm going to do this with one of my old laptops. So I'm going to start by running here make help, get some information about all the different build options. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this option over here, i386 devconfig. And this will configure the build for i386. Now I want to modify the configuration a little bit, so I'm going to run make and then menu config. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down to drivers, press enter on device drivers over here. Then I'm going to scroll down and search for audio. I'm going to enter this option over here, sound card support. Then enter this option, this is Advanced Linux Sound Architecture, or ALSA for short. This basically contains everything that is related to sound in the Linux kernel. So here I'm going to search for the specific option that will add support for my sound card. And later on in this video I'm going to show you how you can find out this information by yourself. I'm going to proceed here to HD Audio. I'm going to scroll down here a little bit. Now this option is what I want, but I just want to make sure, so I'm going to press here on H for help about this option. I'm going to enable this because my sound card is Realtek. So let's exit, and I'm going to press on space, and twice, because I don't want this to be a module. M is for module. If I press again, it becomes an asterisk, and then it's enabled built into the kernel. So this is it with the kernel configuration, so I'm just going to exit, and I'm going to save my new configuration. Okay, now we're ready to build the kernel. I'm going to start by running nproc. And this tells me that I have 20 processors on my computer. So I'm going to split the build to 20 jobs. This will make the build a lot faster. Okay, we can see the build succeeded. BZ image is ready. So we have the kernel image ready. Now let's start building the user space. Now the user space is going to be very simple. It's just going to be BusyBox, which is a collection of useful Unix utilities, and a couple of ALSA utilities to play audio. So I'm going to create a new directory for this. Let's go back here. Let's call it fs for file system. Now since I want to use specifically 32-bit packages, I'm going to manually grab the packages I need from the Alpine Linux website. So go to alpinelinux.org and then click here on mirrors. Then I'm going to go to the first option over here, which is the main one, alpinelinux.org. Click here on HTTPS. Then go here to latest stable. And we're going to go to main over here. And then choose x86. And now I'm just going to start downloading the packages I need. It's just four packages. First one is BusyBox. So click on each one to download it. Next one is going to be AlsaLib. Then AlsaUtils. And finally, Muscle, which is the C library. Okay, and that's it over here, so let's go back to the terminal. Now if we take a look at downloads, I have here the APKs I just grabbed, so I'm going to just copy these to my current folder. Okay, and now I'm going to just extract them with tar. So again, tar xf extract file. And I'm going to just extract one by one. Okay, now it should look something like this. I'm going to just clean up the APKs. Now if we take a look at the bin folder, you can see that there's only BusyBox, but I want to have a lot of other binaries, like standard Unix binaries. But the way it works is that we need to symlink all these binaries into BusyBox. Because BusyBox is basically a single binary which can act as a lot of different utilities, for example, ls or whoami. 
and it changes the way it acts according to how it's called. So if we just make a lot of symlinks, for example, one symlink that is named ls or one is, that is named who am I, and point them to busybox, busybox is gonna act as if it was ls or who am I. Luckily, we don't have to do this manually. We have a command for this, busybox install. And you can see it over here, by the way, if you run busybox and then help. This is what I'm gonna use. Busybox install and dash s, it's gonna make it all sim symlinks. And I'm gonna tell it to install into bin. And yeah, you will need the full path to busybox when you invoke this, so just run it like this, busybox and then install, dash s, bin. Now if we take a look at bin, you see a lot of stuff added here, and if you run here ls dash l, they all point to bin busybox. So this works out, everything points to bin busybox, and bin busybox is right over here. Now let's write a simple initialization script for the distro. So I'm gonna start a new file here and call it init. So the interpreter is gonna be sh, and first thing I wanna do is mount. So I'm gonna mount dev tempfs, which is the type of the file system that is used for slash dev. If you wanna take a look, just run mount and then grep dev tempfs. And you can see how dev tempfs is on dev. And we're also gonna mount proc, so you can take a look at that as well. And here's proc. It's just, the type is just proc. So these are just essentials that we'll need to get access to the device or some information about Elsa. Now, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the a mixer command. And let's take a look at the man page for that. And I'm gonna use this to increase the volume of the master control. Cause it just starts like with the zero volume. So I'm gonna unmute it and put it in 100%. So the way it works is that we need to give it a command. So I'm gonna use the set command. The control is master. And if you wanna take a look at the controls, like for example, on my host computer over here, so you just run a mixer. And you can see, for example, a control name master. So that's what I'm gonna set in this case. I'm gonna set the volume to 100% and unmute. And now finally, I'm gonna start the system. So just bin sh, start the shell. Okay, this is it for the init script. So I'm gonna save this and schmod it with the execute permission. Now the folder should look something like this. Now I wanna bring in some music. So I'm gonna copy from my music folder here. Now there is one more thing I wanna do before we pack this. I need to configure the audio group. So I'm gonna open Vim here and start by editing etc and group. What I'm gonna do is take inspiration from my actual etc group. And I'm gonna just copy the audio line over here and just remove myself. It's just gonna be root. That's gonna be the only user on the system. Next thing I need to do is the same thing etc but password. Let's open it here as well on my host. And I'm gonna need to copy the line here with the root user, which will be the only user on our system. Okay, now I can close this. And now I'm gonna pack this all. So I'm gonna start by running find, which will list all the files recursively. Pipe this into CPIO, make an archive. Now the format is gonna be new C, and you can take a look at the docs for this. This is how you specify a format. And new C is just the archiving format that the kernel supports. And I'm gonna pass in also dash O, which is create a new archive. And let's pipe this to init.cpio. Okay, and let's test this out with the kernel. So for this, I'm gonna use QMU. This is a PC emulator. Pass in the kernel we just built and the init ram file system we just created, the init ramfs. Now another important option I wanna pass in is dash audio. And we'll get some help about this. First off, we need to select an audio driver and this will be Elsa. And this is the audio driver on my host. Now next thing I wanna select is the model that it's gonna emulate. So for this, I'm gonna type in model and then help. We can see all the sound cards that QMU can emulate. 
In this case, I'm going to emulate HDA, which is going to be a similar setup to my physical computer we're later going to test on. So pass in HDA over here. Now let's run this. Okay, cool. We got a shell over here. I'm going to start by running speaker test to see if everything is working. This is one of the commands in Elsa Utils. Okay, and we can see it working. Now I'm going to restart the machine. Next, I'm going to try playing one of the audio files. So let's play startup, for example. For this, I can use Aplay, another utility from Elsa Utils. Okay, cool. This is working as well. Now we can move on into making ISO image and trying this on real hardware. Okay, so I'm going to run here make help again. And this time I'm going to utilize the ISO image option here. And I'm going to pass in the init ramfs we just made to these arguments over here. So it's going to be make ISO image, then start with fdargs. And here I'm going to specify where the init ramfs is inside of the image, which is going to be placed in init.cpio. And fd init rd, this is where the init ramfs is on my host right now, the folder. So we put it in distro and then init.cpio. Now I'm going to run this. Okay, and the ISO is ready. Before I'm going to test this with real hardware, let's test this with QMU. So again, QMU system x86-64. This time I'm going to use the CD-ROM option and pass this in. Let's just see that it boots fine. Okay, it looks good. Now I'm going to write this into a USB flash drive. So I'm going to connect it to my computer right now. And now the Linux kernel has allocated a device for this USB drive. So I'm going to take a look at cat slash proc slash partitions. And we can see that the kernel allocated SDC for this device. You can see it's quite small. It's 64 megs. It's a pretty old flash drive. So I'm going to write it into SDC. So for this, I'm going to use the DD command. Input file is going to be the ISO image. And the output is going to go to SDC. And let's set the block size to be 1 meg. And of course with sudo. Okay, and cool. We can see it was copied. It's just 19 megs. It's a good practice to run sync before I'm going to remove the USB drive from my computer. And now let's go boot this on real hardware. Okay, so now that we have the flash drive ready, let's test it with real hardware here. This is a Sony Vio P. It's a 32-bit only processor it's from 2009. And let's see how it works with the distro we just built. Okay, nice. Looks all good. Let's try playing some of the music. So I'm going to use A play and then start up dot web let's try a play shut down two additional small things first of all i forgot in my init script to create the proc directory beforehand it still works because it's not really necessary proc for making the sound work but if you want this command to work just make sure to mkdir proc before that. Next thing is, how do you determine the sound card on your computer? Well, there are a couple of ways, but one of them is if you go here to slash proc and then a sound. So everything related to ALSA, specifically the kernel side of ALSA. And then you can take a look at the cards file over here. You'll get information about the sound cards on your system. You can see that one is my microphone, my blue snowball. And this is the... HDA Intel sound card. Another file you can take a look at is PCM. And this will give you more information. For example, we can see that it's not only Intel HD audio, but we can see here an actual model version, ALC897. Now, if you just look this up online, you'll see that this is Realtek. So my host computer here has a Realtek sound card. So that's how you can determine what to enable in the kernel configuration. Of course, you can also just look up the specs of the specific computer and you'll find this information as well.